Does the color of the sky mean anything special to you? It does to me. A hell of a lot. When I close my eyes, the sky in my dreams is a deep, dark blue. Pilots have been in my family for four generations. Flying's in my DNA. Even so, my grandpa didn't want me joining the Air Force. He lost faith in the Ocean Air Defense the day my dad died in battle. You know, Abby, I wish you could see what it's like up there. Cruising above the clouds, the dark blue of the stratosphere. Nothing beats being at the controls and seeing it from the cockpit. Look here. Gramps tossed a magazine over to me with an article. Unmanned fighters are no longer a dream, it read. Pilots taking to the skies will soon be a distant memory. I don't see anything good coming from that. Know what? Lying smack dab in the middle of the desert west of here, there's a bunch of planes from the last war. Some of them have been mothballed, but most of them are just rusted piles of junk waiting to be scrapped. Gramps was really good friends with the Super there, so he got to take whatever he wanted, no questions asked. That's how we got the parts to build our own plane. Now, when I say we, I mean me, my grandpa, and his old war buddies. I cut my teeth working with those geezers. They taught me their skills and some dirty jokes. But with their aging eyeballs and whatnot, I ended up having to do most of the work myself. I was at the airstrip doing some flight training when I saw it. A prototype drone. It wasn't much of a plane, more of a trash can with wings. Laugh at it all you want, kid. But technology's always changing. If you don't keep up with it, it'll leave your ass behind. It took six years and eight months to get that engine running. And it took us another year and a half after that to finally get the balance of the airframe just right. I'd gone from being a little girl to, well, still a girl, just older. But now, I was all alone. <sighs> Wherever the souls of my Gramps and his pals are flying, I hope it's peaceful. Then, finally, I was ready to break the sound barrier. All this plane could do was take off, accelerate, and fly up. fighters. They were tailing something. A drone. They were going full out chasing that thing. Doing 30 G's at least. Damn, I've never seen anything move that fast. It had a rose painted on it. The Erusian emblem. But that country's a whole continent away from here. Is everyone here? Settle down. I said settle down. You have all been instrumental in helping to maintain peace in Yuzha as members of the International Union Peacekeeping Force. Until today. Earlier, 
Our radar site informed us that a group of unidentified aircraft was approaching. Communication systems went down immediately afterwards. We are led to conclude that they have attacked the site. Here's your mission. It's possible that the Yuzhen ceasefire agreement has been broken for the first time in over a decade. As of today, the Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron of the IUPF has been put on high alert. All members who have been ordered to sortie, fly there immediately. Find the unidentified craft, then use your weapons to round them up and force them to land. If the hostiles counterattack, then you will... What the hell was that? There's smoke! We're under attack. Numerous unidentified aircraft confirmed overhead. What? How is that possible? The tank farm to the north has been bombed. Many injured. Scramble. All units, take off and eliminate the unidentified craft attacking the base. This is not a drill. Mage, job well done. All bombers are down. Our radar shows no sign of bandits. You're in the clear. Good going, Mage 2. Flight Commander looks like he's got what it takes. Let's slow down. It's just one sortie. Don't try to be a hero. I want you to make it back in one piece, you hear? Yeah, I gotta side with the boss man on this. Golem Squadron, this is HQ. Did you confirm any drones? What's the deal with all the drones? Column 1, return to base and report for debriefing. We are currently assessing the damage to the base. We, we know the attacking bogies were from Arusia. International Union peacekeeping force bases all over the Yuzhen continent were attacked in the same way. The damage is severe. Many wars are lost. As of 1 p.m. today, the Kingdom of Arusia has declared war on the Ocean Federation. As soon as the news broke out, enemy aircraft began bombing Ocean territory, causing widespread destruction. The Air Defense Force has released a statement saying this violent attack was carried out by drones. They speculate the drones were secretly transported to Osea in shipping containers and launched remotely. The Secretary of the Navy has stated that the enemy was targeting naval ports across the country. According to the Secretary, all of the nation's aircraft carriers, including one still under construction, sustained severe damage in the attacks. We have yet to hear back from the Department as to the fate of Ocean carriers currently at sea. Hold on, I've just received breaking news. The International Space Elevator, which is being built in southern Yuzha, has been seized by the Erusian Army. Reports say former President Harling was touring the site at the time, but his current whereabouts are unknown. Our sources in government tell us it was Harling's policies regarding the space elevator that caused economic frictions in the area, and which ultimately led to this war. Located near Erugia, on the continent of Yuzha, the space elevator has been under construction for some time now. The Executive Office of the Ocean Federation has declared a national state of emergency. They have ordered all its armed forces, including Yuzhen peacekeepers, to mobilize and make the necessary preparations to launch an immediate counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is officially at war. Stay tuned for further updates. Breaking news from ENN. Osea launched an attack on the capital today, striking Farbanti from their aircraft carrier, the Kestrel II. After a brutal battle, the Erujian Air Force successfully repelled them. 
During the air raid, the Ocean Air Force fired missiles at the city and managed to shoot down a number of Erujian fighters. Some of the disabled planes then crashed into residential areas. The world was screwed. 20 years ago, the Earth got slammed by an asteroid. Yuja was on the wrong side of the planet and got hit. Hard. Refugees swarmed the Erujian Republic, the biggest country on the continent, plunging it into chaos. They were desperate and started a war, one they had no hope of winning. That's the war my dad fought and died in. The biggest nations from two continents went head to head, and the so-called righteous Oceans struck the deal that ended it. They fancied themselves the only nation that could bring peace and stability to the world. They even tried saving the Yuzhans, still suffering from the disaster. That's how a space elevator, stretching way up into the sky, ended up being built in Yuzha, paid for by the Oceans. President Harling said he did it out of compassion for his fellow humans. But to the folks in Erujia, it looked like Osea was moving in to take over. Erujia went from being a republic, back to being a kingdom. When they started this new war, they managed to get the drop on everyone. The second the declaration hit the news, Erujian forces took control of the space elevator without spilling a single drop of blood. President Harling was touring the elevator when it happened and disappeared. Then, while that was going on, the Erusian ships that were docked all around Osea released a swarm of drone fighters they had hidden on board in containers. No one thought they were capable of doing what they did that day. With pinpoint accuracy, they managed to take out everything that was military, and not a single civilian was hurt in the process. Osea pissed lots of people off with their huge military presence around the world. Erujia didn't have the same reach, but they could hit their targets faster and cleaner. And when all this was going down, I just so happened to be in my flying drag racer. In case you were wondering, yeah, I survived. I crashed in a bombed-out Ocean Air Force base, then got arrested for breaking wartime aviation laws or some crap. The world went from being at peace to being at war, all in the blink of an eye. I was tried, found guilty, and stuffed into a cargo ship. For company, I had some court-martialed soldiers. And remember those mothballed planes I told you about before? They were loaded on the ship, too. We headed off down south for several days, and then swung east. That's how I got here. I was thousands of kilometers from Arugia, on the opposite side of the Yuzian continent. For a port, it was dull as hell. It had three rusty patrol boats. And the base? The fences were topped with razor wire, the tower had a searchlight and machine guns, and a truck with a gun turret was parked in front of the gate. Its gun was aimed at the yard. This was a prison. This place looked like a full-on base, but half the tanker trucks were just big balloons, and the runways weren't even paved, just painted on the dirt. The whole place was just one big, fat lie. The only reason I was here is because they knew I'd restored a supersonic plane. They wanted me to make something out of the mothballed planes they brought, that they could park on the fake runway. Can you believe that shit? So, I tried to escape. <laughs> they found out. <laughs> and set the dogs on me.
Daruja has made a declaration to the Ocean Federation and all countries on the Yuzhan continent stationing the IUN Peacekeeping Force that we are now at war. Right after the declaration was made, surprise attacks began around the continent that have inflicted major damage to our armed forces. Forces aligned with Arusia are currently appearing throughout Yuzhia. The combination of these forces has overwhelmed the majority of the continent, and they are now encroaching on us in the east. Additionally, the multinational space elevator has been seized by the Arusian military. After the previous war, the space elevator became both a symbol of peace and a valuable asset in the fight against growing energy concerns. Whoever has control of it will have enormous influence over the entire continent. We cannot turn a blind eye to this critical situation. The Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron has been entered into the order of battle to reclaim the elevator as an advance element. First, you will attack all hostiles coming in the east of Schofield Plateau to stop any interference with the Allied ground troops. The enemy has deployed several vehicles equipped with anti-air radar along the roads. You are to destroy them. They should not pose much of a threat. However, there is a high likelihood that the attack will draw more enemy air support. If that happens, fight them off swiftly and establish air superiority. Status report. Multiple bogeys on radar. They're close. Wait, they're being launched. You're clear to engage. They're probably hostile. Judge it by the way they look and move. They gotta be drones. Well spotted, Cloud. No doubt about it, we're dealing with UAVs. But that doesn't change a thing. Just think of them as somewhat clever decoys. Take them all down. These drones have great agility. All aircraft. You know what high G turns are, right? Use them. HQ, this is Gollum 1. Bandits confirmed as UAVs. Repeat, bandits are drones. Target destruction confirmed. Gollum 1, that doesn't matter. Destroy all enemy fighters and get out. It doesn't matter. He says the war can change in an instant. Get over it. Yeah, I just wish they'd give us a bit more warning. Enemy UAV confirmed destroyed. Hell yeah. Gollum Squadron, you're not gonna let Mage get all the glory, are ya? Mage 2 is taking down an enemy. How many is that now? Just Gollum two more. Two. The enemy's reading you. The enemy knows a few moves, but that's about it. Just chase him down and pull the trigger. Nice kill, Trigger. Enemy aircraft confirmed down. The skies are clear. Nice work, everyone. Mission complete. RTB. No casualties. We couldn't have done any better. Returning to base. I don't know. Maybe the bandits we took down caused civilian casualties. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. You shoot, someone gets killed. The guys in charge take care of the rest. You've given us air superiority by destroying their radar. The first barrier keeping us from retaking the space elevator is gone. Now is the time to group up and begin the counteroffensive. Let us reclaim what is ours. The surprise attacks carried out after the declaration of war saw the peacekeeping forces of various countries, including Osea, suffer major damage. The ships moored around the space elevator and near Gandar Bay have been hit particularly hard. Numerous ships have been sunk and abandoned. Fortunately, our cutting-edge aircraft carrier Kestrel II was at sea, so it was spared from the attack. Kestrel II is now preparing to launch another attack against Arusia's capital, Farbanti.
The aircraft carrier Vulture also managed to escape Gandar Bay safely. However, it lost all its aircraft, so it's sailing empty. Today, the International Union Peacekeeping Force reclaims its bid to the space elevator. The Fort Gray's Island Air Base Squadron will rendezvous with the carrier Vulture for a joint mission. The first objective will be to seize air superiority in Choppenburg in order to secure a route for the support squadrons. The enemy maintains air superiority over Choppenburg, so expect heavy resistance from enemy aircraft. There's more, so listen carefully. Right from the start of the war, the enemy has been deploying drones. They're using a new advanced type of drone. The unmanned airborne aircraft carrier, the Arsenal Bird, carries this new drone. MQ-101. The Ocean Army headed up the development of the massive arsenal birds and dispatched them to the space elevator to provide support. However, it's been reported that the carriers may have fallen into the hands of the Erujian forces. If that's true, it could be a significant obstacle for us. We need to regain control of the space elevator ASAP. Good luck out there. Shows no sign of bandits. You're in the clear. I haven't even broken a sweat. They would be crazy to pick a fight with us. A rabid dog would know better. The saloon coming. Invade. Break. Break. Wait. What the hell? Caution. Missile. Caution. A large aircraft is approaching. All aircraft, stay alert. Down. We've had too many losses. 
All squadrons, command has ordered a complete withdrawal. Leave the operation area immediately. Early in observation. If they noticed earlier, more of us would have survived a hearing. Save your chatter for the debriefing. Gollum and Mage Squadron, give our allies some time to escape. We'll go, but Gollum 2 is hit. Gotta send her back. Let's get dirty, Trigger. Shoot down those UAVs. Don't let them touch any friendlies. Gollum 2, head back to base. Gargoyle 1, escort Gollum 2. Continuing the mission. Still got my wings. Trigger doesn't need to fill in for me. I'm back and I... You won't make any difference up here. Get back to base and cool your head. Copy that. Returning home. I'm against an SU-30. Orange wingtips. I can't shake it off. It's matching me move for move. Golem 2, stop dogfighting and run! <sighs> So launched. Yowza! Squadron, Maid Squadron, withdraw. Unfortunately, the two-front offensive was a failure. The aircraft carrier Kestrel II was sunk during the attack on Farbanti. Carrier-borne aircraft mistakenly bombed urban areas, and this has turned public opinion in neutral countries against us. Our own forces also suffered heavy losses. If it weren't for a few extraordinary fighters, many of us wouldn't have made it home. The situation is grim. We have precious little time, however. We have to get to the space elevator. Here we 
he comes. Mihai's looking worse. Thank God he has his granddaughters here to help him out. They're sisters, 15 and 10. Engaging the enemy in combat so we could use his physiological data to improve the drones had always taken a toll on Mihai's body. But today, he was really showing his age. The drones we based on his data were being taken down at a faster rate now compared to when the war began. When Mihai found that out, he insisted on flying to the front lines to see it for himself. Sometimes he could be so stubborn. His age wasn't the only thing affecting his health. Over the years, flying at high altitudes for prolonged stretches of time had ravaged and poisoned his body. But he was a man of grit. Today, after 28 years, he saw combat again. If his flight suit still wasn't good enough to protect him, I can't imagine how many Gs he hit today during the battle. As a pilot, he exceeds all our expectations. It's going to take a bit more tweaking before our drones can match his skill. How penal is this penal unit, you ask? This place is a shithole. If you took the stink of all the corruption in the world, then corralled it all in one place, that would give you a pretty good idea of what the air smells like around here. We got all kinds of critters, too. Everything from flea-ridden guards, rabid dogs, and a mechanic doing stretch for life. I can't forget the rats. Yeah, we got those. And some pilots who got their wings clipped, too. One's a great pilot, but a lousy thief. One's a gambler with no luck. And one's an anarchist with no balls. Their job here was to rev the engines on the fake runways. The idea was for Arusha's spy satellite to pick up the heat sig. Even though there weren't any real fighters here, it looked like it on their infrared. I bet you're wondering, if Arugia lost the war, how come they still have a spy satellite? Because someone over there was smart enough to train a bunch of computer nerds to hack into half of Osea's satellites. That's how come. Every now and again, I'd try to bust out. And every single time, those damn dogs would drag me right back. When I was in my cell, I'd hear this voice coming from the guards' room. It was the Erujian princess rallying her people on the Erujian national broadcast. All us prisoners had become big fans of hers. You want to hear something funny? The guards were big fans, too. I swear to God, every time she was on the air, they'd turn up the volume on the radio and sit there listening. I could see how someone like her could win the hearts and minds of soldiers and workers alike. When the princess said something, you could tell she meant every word. Lately, she'd been having more fun with her speeches, and that made her seem even more charming. You could say her charm was like a virus. Whenever she'd point out stuff that was wrong with Osea, the prisoners in here went nuts. Hell, if anyone knew how messed up Osea was, it was the prisoners. They'd shout, burn Osea down. No way am I just going to sit here and rot away in this hellhole. Dark blue. Instead of building fake-ass planes to trick Arusha, I'm going to build one that'll really take off. You can count on that. failure of our previous strategy. The arsenal birds have bolstered the enemy's anti-air network. This will be difficult to overcome. However, we still need to get swiftly to the space elevator no matter what it takes. Someone there is counting on us. The hero of the Circum Pacific War and the man who spearheaded the construction of the space elevator. Osea's former president, Mr. Harley. Mr. Harley was inspecting the elevator when the war broke out. He's been classified as missing since the elevator was taken over by the Eurasian forces. However, a 
According to the latest intel, a military officer accompanying Mr. Harling hid him inside the facility. Both are waiting for a chance to escape. Enemy anti-air radar network has been set up around the space elevator. It's likely a large squadron can be detected. We will send a single aircraft through the network and send in a rescue team soon after. A number of anti-air radars have been set up around the space elevator. However, our reconnaissance suggests their network is weakest along the southeastern coast of Selatakura. So we can elude the enemy's observation. There are a lot of rain clouds this time of year. Flying through the clouds will enable us to stay hidden from their radar. If you happen to be detected by their radar, we will be forced to abort the mission. The lone pilot will head up this strategy as you, Trigger. After you bust through, secure the rescue craft's landing zone by taking out the anti-air weapons. Gollum and others will arrive shortly for support. Provide escort for Mr. Harling's craft after rendezvous. Good luck out there, everyone. Entering operation area, imposing radio silence. We'll radio you, but you are not permitted to make contact. If you're spotted, the mission is over. Stay out of enemy radar. Use of weaponry is also strictly forbidden. Okay, you're heading up the Harling rescue mission. The success of this mission depends on you. Good luck. Warren, there's no way we can provide adequate cover. All UAVs have been splashed. All aircraft. Former President Harling's transport is ready to take off. Mother Goose One, take off. All right. Mother Goose One, taking off. Let's wait till we're home safe. Mage Squadron, Mother Goose One is heading south. Provide support. Five minutes remaining. The operation to rescue former President Harling has failed. Sadly, there is no hope he survived. Trigger, you are suspected of assassinating the former president. There will be an inquiry. There will most probably be a court-martial. Bad news for us here at the prison. The enemy fell for our decoy base. With all the fake planes and trucks we had out, it must have looked to them like the Ocean Air Force was about to go on the attack. Day after day after day after day, they bombed us. Osea didn't give a damn. 
We weren't soldiers to them, so go ahead. Bomb us. In their eyes, we were expendable. Worth less than the fake planes in the bunkers. No biggie. While I made fake planes, they had me put together some working ones. Then, some genius at HQ decided we should send it up, so the base looked legit. Thankfully, we had people to crew them. It didn't matter what we were locked up here for anymore. Top brass needed pilots, and criminals were all they had. A crook, a gambler, an anarchist. Just your typical lowlifes. They threw each one of them in a cockpit and sent them up to intercept the enemy's planes. But in the end, it was all just for show. So, up they went, day after day after day. Today they tossed someone new into the mix. Wonder what he did to get sent here. My dad died flying for the Ocean Air Force. When your allies are surrounded, one of the most dangerous missions is giving them cover to retreat. Whoever signed up for that was a real hero. But even more dangerous than that was being the one who had to cover the rear guard's retreat. That was my dad's job. And one time, he called it off. Said it was too late for him. Said anyone else would have done the same. I found that out from a war buddy of his when he came to tell me how my dad died. The next time a retreat happened, my dad volunteered to be in the rear guard. Dumbass. He died all right. No one came to help. The news nearly broke me. Of all the ways to get killed, that's gotta be the most pathetic one ever. Am I right? There's a rumor going around about another inmate, a guy they brought here a little while ago. Get this, talk in the cell block says he was sent here because he killed Harling, the president of Osea during the last war, remember? He's the one that sent my dad on that suicide mission. He's the reason I had to go live with my grandpa, and why me and Gramps started building a supersonic jet. He's the reason I ended up here. Maybe I should give that guy a thank you note for killing him. Nah. God, I hate the smell of this place. It's all fake and lies and bullshit. It reeks. All right, guys, I'll let you in on some juicy info. The new guy was found guilty by the International Union Peacekeeping Forces Court Martial. He is the murderer of Harling in the flesh. His tag name's Trigger. Now, as of today, he may be attached to the Ocean Air Force Base 444th Squadron. But that is just some symbolic bullshit. It doesn't really matter if he's Harling's murderer or not. Every last one of you has been incarcerated for one reason or another. You cons have an obligation to atone for your crimes. A few of you in the penal unit know how to fly, and HQ needs to plug the deficit in our Air Force. So they proposed sending you guys on a reconnaissance mission to the Waipolo Mountains. But that idea was flat out rejected. Nope, you'll be atoning for your crimes right here at this base. This base is a decoy designed to draw enemy fire. And as members of this base, you'll be taking hits from the enemy. This will allow our forces to safely prepare a counterattack. Incoming! Switch off that alarm. It's just the usual. I thought Zapland was supposed to be an isolated area. Okay. I'm gonna need a few aircraft to scramble. Again? What are those? Better than solitary. Enemy aircraft detected over the dummy runway. We just need to make it look like we can put up a fight. Some of those piles of junk can at least take off. Let's get the guiltiest cons in the sky first. We'll start with Harling's murderer. We don't expect you to down any bombers. But what we do want is to make them think that we've got an active base here.
Follow orders, Trigger. Taxi to the runway now. Check your altimeter and wait in front of the runway. Control, would you kindly send me up first? Spare A, Champ, this is the control tower. You're not cleared for takeoff. Obey orders. Go to hell. All aircraft preparing for takeoff. Watch out for Spare A. He's forcing a takeoff. I'll take up command. Any objections? That'll get decided in disguise. <laughs> you should. Trigger your call sign is Spare 15. Consider it your prisoner number for the air. Commencing deception and interception. Spare 15, the runway's free. You have permission to take off. Go now. <laughs> My blood's boiling! Toss the chump in solitary once he gets back. Spare 8, when you land, your ass is grass. Spare 15, takeoff confirmed. Altitude restriction lifted. Go. So, no missiles again. The FCS is locked. Damn. You're good. Let's make this more interesting. Prisoners use nothing without supervision. Not even a pencil. <laughs> Here comes Harling's murderer. He shot two missiles right between old Harling's eyes. <laughs> Always in the know, aren't you? <laughs> in this war, intel is a life or death matter. Settle down. Excited to have another murderer with you? Yeah! This is Bandog. Spare 15, I'm handling surveillance. The bombers that attacked the runway are coming back for another round. I know it's just a dummy runway. You guys just need to make a lot of noise. Make them think there's fighters at the base. Anyone got a smoke? I'll owe you one. If any of you die, just think of it as you atoning for your crimes. Much appreciated. <laughs> one more thing. Any aircraft leaving the operation area will be shot down. You hear me? Righto. Spare 15, you're too far away. No time for sightseeing. This is juicy target. Look at them. Blowing up a bunch of paper planes. The enemy seems to think our air force is concentrated on this base. Everything on the ground is fake. Can't the enemy see that? <laughs> Means they're that convincing. Shit! The enemy just hit the control tower! Hey, what's with all the shaking? There's smoke! Send in the fire team. Not let the enemy get closer. Are you trying to kill me? Shall I order them to shoot down all? Commander. Commander McKinsey? Damn it! Spare squadron, listen up. Shoot down everything carrying bombs. Weapons free. You're clear to engage. Show no mercy. I do this. Spare eight, watch your mouth. All targets confirmed eliminated. Yeah. Hell yeah! Still alive, Harling's murderer? Then dinner's on me tonight. Cut the chatter, Spare Squadron. Mission complete. RTB. Trigger's still with us. Must have the devil in his corner. Spare 7, what happens if the one you've bet on dies while landing? <laughs> then you win. So what, you're not done? Just checking. Spare 15, this is the control tower. Make your landing check. We don't want a wreck blocking the runway. Spare 15. Did I say you could take down the enemy? Throw anyone who disobeys into solitary. Mihai's granddaughters like to keep to themselves mostly. They were well behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at them, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. 
Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shilaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aeon Ignatius Raphael Maria Nikitas A. Shilaji. When he was young, he was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shilaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Arusian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot. When the royal family was ousted and Arugia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess, and I found out later she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for, the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Arugian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in our regular force to clean them out. For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy. Okay, you've hit the enemy base enough. Operation is complete. 
Head back. The bastards who flew off are going to wish they were never born. You guys get a pass. Damn right. I wouldn't be surprised if we're thrown in solitary too. Hey, who wants to bet who goes into solitary? That's what that gambling nut job would say if he was still here. <laughs> Where's your sense of humor, guys? Your buddy's making a joke. Laugh already. You lost planes, but the mission succeeded. However, some of you cross the return line for supplies and for repairs. This will result in solitary. Take them. Just remember, if you disobey orders, there's a special place in solitary confinement for you. Your so-called right to complain was forfeited the moment you chose to break the law. Okay then, go make yourselves useful. An Ocean Air Force squadron is currently entering Arusian territory for reconnaissance. Due to certain factors, their return route has been changed. The new return route will be through Ginshi Valley, a scenic and rocky karst area. The enemy's radar facilities and anti-aircraft weapons hidden on the mountainside pose a serious threat. Your mission is to destroy them and get our guys out in one piece, even if it puts your own lives in danger. And it is important to remember, they will send up interceptors if you're detected. So you will need to choose something useful in a dogfight. Weather won't be on your side, but you're doing this whether you like it or not. Worry about the squadron's return route, not your own. Your mission is to get them back safely, which I think is the perfect punishment for your crimes. All available units support spare eight. I don't need any support. This is all mine. Damn it. He's close to my tail. I'm not letting this slide. Cyclops and Strider. Keep the bandit off of them. Negative. That's not possible. Get in there with that monster, Spare 15. We're gonna lose more friendlies. You told us our jobs are done. I'm going home. I'm done. Why are some of those Air Force craft flying out of bounds? Those damn cowards failing on us? I just sent back the damaged craft. We only need guys we can use. Spare 15, Spare 11. Form an element and take up the rear. Forget it. Trigger's taking the beast head on. You two deal with support. So this is where tabloid bows out. Shit. Roger that. Will do. Soul 2, Soul 3. They've got two rear guard. The better one's mine. Don't tell me that. Spare 15, Trigger 2. Kill the bastard that shot down Champ. I'm not good enough. Spare 15, you've iced up. This is Spare 11. Launching missile. Jobs and I'll do mine. 
bandits in the clouds. Chase them down. You've got this. Wiseman, you see that call enemy in gun range. The way he's flying? It's Mr. X for sure. The pilot of the experimental squadron's X-plane. Missile hit. Is he down? No, we managed to take it in a non-critical area. I'll teach you how to do that when we get back. Wiseman, we don't want to mess with this guy. It's clear by the way he flies. Way out of my league. Exactly the man you land and want to run into. Jaeger, if it comes down to it, we'll act as a shield. Just get my guys out of here. Understood. The enemy's in the clouds. Follow them, Spare 15. Do something or the entire recon squadron could go down. You're telling me there's only two craft taking on the orange guy? No. Just one's taking them on. No way. I wouldn't last a minute. Push it. Do not engage. If it gets close, just run. Copy that. Who's gonna do that anyway? in the unit. Makes sense. Only an idiot would be brave enough to pull off those moves. I'll guide you back to Air Force Base 444, though I doubt you have enough gas to make it. Appreciate the help. Will you be at the base? I wouldn't get involved if I were you. Runway is clear. You have permission to land. The crew said the enemy had one mean son of a bitch flying for him. Our team had a few Air Force hot dogs, real experienced pilots. But this guy swooped in like a hawk, locked on, and took them all out in the blink of an eye. Reminds me of a story Gramps told me once. He said a little while before he retired from active duty, he saw an enemy fighter wipe out an entire formation right in front of him. It was like seeing how a shark works when it's going after its dinner. This enemy pilot stalked Gramps' pals from below, just like how a shark would. Then one by one, he put the bite on him. Sounds like what happened to our guys today. Kinda surprised so many made it back alive. I bet when they saw what was going on, they broke formation and left their buddies to the shark. Hang on. There's three extra planes here. They're foreigners too. Spare Squadron, this mission needs to be... You returned without permission and failed as escorts. So how about you rethink your value while in solitary? Take them away. Well, after all, we have to get a favorable report out of them. I've spent enough of my time being the commander of some worthless penal unit. I had a chance to talk to one of the pilots that escaped back here, so I took it. Apparently, two of our planes took the enemy on alone. They covered the Allies so they could retreat. What kind of idiot does a thing like that? The last pilot to land back at the base was that scrawny anarchist dude. He always had this dumb grin on his face, 
Like he didn't give a damn about whatever he did to get thrown in here with the rest of us. Was he the one who went gung-ho? I bought him a drink later. After the usual small talk, I turned the topic around to the mission. For an anarchist, he struck me as a bit weird. Nothing like what I expected. He talked a mile a minute and kept going on and on about library books. Not encyclopedias, those cheesy adventure novels you read in high school. Nothing against those. I like a good story myself once in a while. But I wasn't here to talk books. Uh, I remember that day well. Amidst the swirling clouds, the fighter squadron was trying to help its allies reach safety. He's pretty foolish, isn't he? I thought so too. Suddenly, a highly skilled enemy fighter squadron appeared and began picking them off at the edges. One by one, they fell right out of the sky. Although, I guess there was nobody around that was even more foolish to go to their aid then. So, you simply watch things unfold from a distance. Yeah. I mean, who would have ever thought that I'd just go and follow him straight into the enemy squadron like that? After what felt like decades, I finally got to the info I was looking for. He wasn't the guy. He said he was just following his wingman's lead and managed not to die somehow. The hero on this mission was the new guy. The one that killed Harling. <laughs> How did you feel? I'm still kind of shaken up, actually. But you know... I do feel a certain sense of pride, too. He really is foolish, isn't he? Yep, he sure is. I went to the hangar to have myself a closer look at Trigger's plane. I knew that burnt smell. That's what happens when an engine's been driven to its limit. This pilot was a hot dog. From now on, I was going to keep my eye on this idiot. From a distance, though. I didn't want to get too tight with someone who was a better pilot than my dad. Even so, I decided to give this guy's plane a little bit of the old Avril magic touch. He needed all the help he could get. Attention! If you disobeyed orders in the previous mission, line up over there. You won't disobey a second time. Do not test my patience. The biggest threat to our forces is the enemy's enormous swarm of drones. In order for our forces to penetrate deep into Arusian territory, we'll need to clear a path. You will destroy the enemy's fuel plant. HQ has found evidence that fuel is being moved intermittently inland from a refinery at the harbor in Artiglio. It's likely they're supplying fuel for the various drone bases. Those of you whose food privileges were taken away already know how this goes. We silence the drones by taking their fuel. Enter via the estuary, take out their AA, destroy the fuel points on both sides of the river and their oil tankers. Remember, you're not bona fide military. You're expendable. Understood. HQ sent a message. That was the last one. All aircraft return to base. Burning up all those tankers will starve their drones for a while. I'm still alive. <laughs> Stick with Trigger and you'll make it. Worked like a charm. If you think that's all you need to survive, you might as well get your last rights now. Exactly, that was all dumb luck. Wait, you were in your shot count? Must have been straining to hear from high altitude. Seems you've learned nothing in the sky, Count. Well, yeah, it's not like there's anything I can learn from Trigger.
The mission was a success. There's nothing else I need to say. Dismissed. So it looks like we're getting attention from above. If any credit is due, it should come to me. Prisoners deserve nothing. some of you in the penal unit as a valid military force. Or at least that's what the rumors are saying. But that's bullshit. The only reason you're here is to atone for your crimes by carrying out missions. Well, you sit on your ass and get medals. You, solitary, now. Okay, on to the briefing. In this mission, you're going into Arusian territory. We know the Arusian Forces communications facility to the north in the Wyapolo Mountains is linked to the swarming drones. Your mission is critical. You will destroy the facility and then weaken those drones. As it's important, the enemy won't go down without a fight. The area is watched over by spy satellites. If discovered, expect AA missiles. Unless you have a death wish, you must use the clouds for cover around the sides and base of the mountains. Use the clouds to hide from their satellites, and you just might have a chance to shake off their missiles. If you do find a missile on your tail, head to the clouds and pray. Let the missile kill you or crash into the rocks. That much freedom I will give. Watching from above. Stay in or below the clouds to keep hidden. That means no missiles. Even you lot should understand that. Talk about an enclosed space. What's more enclosed than solitary? Commence operation. That's your target radar. Destroy the anti-air weapons around it, too. Enemy start attacking! Enemy aircraft are heading this way! Just drive them away. Chase them upward. Lead them into the missiles. What if the radar isn't under a cloud? Destroy it, and then scurry for cover if you value your life. I thought you'd say that. Destroy radar sights. You're still under satellite observation. Watch out for missiles. Feels like I'm being watched by a pack of band dogs. Their missiles are guided by a combination of the satellite and the radar facility. So if the radar facility is destroyed, their missiles should stop hitting their targets. Are you sure you can trust that intel? Who knows? Only one way to find out. They sure aren't making things easy for us. Damn it, they're making us do something, but just what? It's a dangerous operation, but it's better than running through a minefield blind, I guess. You're so naive, Tabloid. What we're doing is exactly like running through a minefield blind. Silence. If you've got time to yap, you're not doing your job right. Got in using a trick any amateur could think of. <laughs> Picked up a bunch of intel. Full man, that's your second strike. There won't be a third. The enemy is packing a lot of anti-air weaponry. I know. I can't focus on attacking like this. Cancel alert. Remember that satellite is up there. Here comes the anti-air missile. Target destroyed. Two to go. I got my hands on a password, and after some digging around, I found a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure you understand what you're saying, Spare Six. I'll let you in on it when we're home, Bandog. In this war, intel is a life or death matter. <sighs> I think you might be right. All targets destroyed. That's the last of the radar sites we needed to destroy. That probably put a stop to their satellite's missile guidance capabilities. Someone fly above the clouds. How about you do it? I like the sound of that. You could do with the exercise. Wait a minute. Hold it. What's going on, Bandog? This is the Air Force Base 444 Squadron. What is your affiliation? Nobody told me there was this many nearby. Incoming Allied fighters, respond.
Well, the regular forces don't want anything to do with the penal base. Hey, they have radar lock. The IFF says they're allies. Missile row, time out. Don't tell me they're barrier troops. They're picking us off. Someone's on me. Is he an enemy? Evade. Ocean fighters do not attack. Shit. Accident. It got out of control. Return to base. Son of a bitch! Mission was a success. There's nothing else I need to say. Dismissed. Hold on, Count. It looks like your kill numbers are going up every day. 
You know what happens by giving false reports. Anyway, you other pilots should learn from him. I'm getting the hell out of this dump. And when I do, their kill count will make my star shine brighter. Suddenly, we were being treated like a regular unit. We've been ordered to pack everything up and move the base further inland. We even got a transport plane. The funny thing is, no one here remembers I've got a bum leg and, oh, that I'm not a soldier. Take a look at the map. There's an island on the other side of Yuja our Marines landed on. The space elevator's not too far from there. They tell us the airfield's being used as a base to support the elevator. Not sure if I trust that intel. Anyway, the transport plane's gonna drop us there. Without any fighters to cover us. Some genius thought we could commandeer the enemy's jets they left in the hangars, and use those to fight. Y'all aren't real soldiers, they said. Any other day we'd be using you lowlifes to go out and dig up landmines. And prisoners don't get guns. You'll just have to make do with whatever we give you and like it. A phone. They don't let us prisoners near them. But with all the hustle and bustle of moving the base, they forgot to lock this one up. Looks like an antique. I lost my right for a phone call ever since I was arrested and locked up. It's trippy to think that I can just hook it up, dial a number, and talk to someone from my own country. Planning escapes ain't all I'm good at. I'm plenty good at remembering phone numbers, too. A little while later, I headed over to HQ. You must know. We did get a call direct from command. That pipe, what exactly are you doing with it? My grandfather had a lot of friends in the Air Force from his time as a lieutenant. My point? Well, you're going to set out in your own special aircraft. Then you'll send everybody else off in the wrong direction while you head somewhere else. All right, fine. But just you and you alone. You're the only one allowed on board. Besides, there's only one seat left. I said, cool. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Attention. I've received a communication from the General Staff Office. It seems your ability to carry out missions has gotten the attention of the higher-ups. All of you have been pardoned. The Ocean Air Force Base 444 Squadron is now officially legit. In celebration, you are to join the operation to take back the base on Tyler Island in southwestern Yuzhia. The battle is underway, and the airport to the south has been reclaimed. However, fighting with the remaining forces in the north is still active. You will all be stationed at the airport. The battle is not letting up. We expect extensive losses to all involved. Still, the fact that we've gained new ground is a blessing. My time as CO of the penal base is over. All command personnel, including myself, are being moved to a base in far eastern Yuzhia. However, we will be stopping to refuel in Bulgurderest. It's in Erujian territory, with close ties to Osi. Even if we detour, we will still have to fly through Erujian airspace in the end. And that is where we will need you ex-cons to come in. I've selected a number of you with mission experience to provide support. That's all. Dismissed. Hey, Trigger, wait right there. Though I'm not entirely happy with the arrangement, you are going to provide support. The drones might attack again. If they do, protect my aircraft with your life. If the General Staff Office hadn't stepped in and requested you, your ass would have been sent to Tyler Island. You were covered in Harley's blood, yet you still are messing around behind the scenes. You breathe in a way I don't like, and I'll shoot you out of the damn sky.
Spare 15, this is the control tower. So the liaison plane left without me. Yeah, I know. I'm heading into hell. Whatever. If the con's here and the dumbass prison guards are going, why shouldn't I? I'm no angel. I mean, my old man died playing hero, and all I do is hate him for it. It ain't gonna be a picnic, that's for sure. Adios, you damn fool. The order is simple. Kill anyone trying to kill the commander, even if they're one of us. Like how you killed Full Band? It was an accident, so shut up. Give me that. I'll do the talking. This is Base Commander McKinsey. I want you idiots to understand the gravity of this operation. My orders take priority. That's it. <sighs> sure wish our cargo would shut up. The enemy's using anti-air weapons. Don't freak out. Keep your shit together. Be on the lookout for camouflage SAM sites. Seek and destroy. Report your situation. If everything's fine, prepare to land. Ah, oh, would you look at that? Support has kept me alive. This is significant for all of our forces. I've left my mark by proving the penal unit's ability as a usable military... All force. aircraft caution. Bogies. Run ain't over yet. Unidentified aircraft. They're fast. Real fast. What? We closed in fast. Unknown considered hostile. Respond to the situation. Protect Roper 1. Spare 15, engage. Take down the bandits. Spare 2, support Roper 1 and escort the craft to safety. Welcome! I was just about to ask if I could do that myself. Still active. The bandit evaded a missile. How'd they manage that? Trigger's movements are insane. Oh. Damn, buddy. Bandit lost, confirmed down. Clear skies all round. Spare 15. You did well. Wait. What now? Four friendlies approaching. Allied fighters. This is the Air Force Base 444 Squadron. What is your affiliation? Got a guard dog out here barking? This is your old friend, Cyclops 1. Cyclops Squadron? What are you doing here? I was tracking an enemy prototype. I wouldn't be surprised if that dumbass from your side was the one who downed it. This is Base Commander McKinsey. I apologize on behalf of that asshole. He really screwed up. He didn't listen to my order to stand down. I'm certain he'll be punished for taking down the unidentified aircraft. Give me a break. Commander, if you would kindly accompany me to my base, we'll answer any questions you have there. Actually, I'm grateful. Support was unreliable. Respectfully, sir, I believe they got promise. The order is simple. Ordinarily, you get a warm welcome to our base, but the situation is complicated. That drone is the enemy's latest experimental craft. We wanted to collect data on its capabilities, but that's gone out the window now, hasn't it? To be honest, I didn't think it could be brought down by anything. Oh yeah, your commander has been transferred to a different post. He's probably headed to the front lines where things are hottest. Well, he did stress his achievements. We need every edge we have. We're currently seeing where we can use you best. Stand by for further orders.
the company commander has made it clear he'd like you both to officially join our squad. This is an unprecedented move. Seems like you've got some people looking out for you. Still, I think it's because of how you've conducted yourselves. I believe you'll be an asset to us. Okay, it's time for your briefing. For a long time, our counteroffensive has been overpowered by the Illusion Drone's auto intercept system. If a craft enters their airspace and doesn't respond to their IFF, the drones automatically take off and move to intercept their targets. However, we've discovered that the intercept system is a blind spot. They require this valuable information by sending our other squadrons on dangerous missions to scout all areas and initiate combat. Of all the pilots assigned to us, only two managed to survive the mission. If we don't act now before the enemy can fill in the blind spot, those pilots will have sacrificed themselves for nothing. So, we've been ordered to carry out a long-range strategic strike. Operating separately from the main forces as the long-range strategic strike group, we've been developing a strategy in secret. Cyclops Squadron and Strider Squadron will sortie deep into the erosion territory. We'll be carrying out specialized long-range attack strategies. You will carve your way through the territory to the north of the capital of Guatemala. The first operation involves striking the enemy's main naval force, the Ord Fleet, which is gathered in northern Utah. We've known for some time that there's a large supply base utilized by the enemy fleet in the waters around Snyder's Pond. At present, the enemy fleet is concentrated there. Naturally, they intend to attack eastern Utah, where the Ostian forces are stationed. If we can surprise the enemy with a long-range attack, we could potentially do devastating damage. Still, it's highly likely that their advanced fleet are prepared and have started to move, so combat with the enemy fleet is probably unavoidable. We've verified the existence of a large supply base in the sea, as well as a medium-sized one in the valley by an estimate. It's a wide operation area. Number of places you can expect a large scale combat. So we've set up a return line to replenish your supplies. Use it proactively. Anytime you feel the need to stock up on ammo or make repairs to your craft, it's there. While aircraft and ammo can be replaced, the lives of our pilots cannot. We don't want any casualties out there. Remember that. The counterattack has begun. Brace yourself. Attention all aircraft. Operation complete. The enemy won't recover from this one. You did great out there. I think tonight's the night we finally opened that bottle. I think I understand the new boss's style. Our other newcomer is a unique character. <sighs> the old squad was bad, and I guess it's no different here. I could really perform. If only I had some partners I could trust. No need to worry. I got your back. Relax and do your thing. Give me a break. Sorry, but I'm gonna eat while I work. My judgment goes fuzzy when I'm too hungry. How can you talk about food? Mission was a success. You did more to hobble the enemy's sea power than we first expected. Outstanding work. This should free up our allies who have been bogged down on the east coast. In addition, this success allows us to finally move on and initiate the operation to shoot down the arsenal bird. 
We have a long road ahead of us. Get some rest while you can. now. <laughs> the enemy's defensive range dropped along with that arsenal bird. That just means more pie for us. Are we gonna eat the whole thing? The brass is always hungry for more. They've got a bottomless appetite. But enough about that. Get some rest now before the counterattack. Yeah, we got our hands dirty for nothing. The guys were 
babbling about a three-line marking. Look into that for me. Attention. All the... The mission succeeded, but at a great cost. This victory marks a strategic turning point. The enemy has only one arsenal bird left, and the defensive grid around the space elevator has been decimated. We can expect a counteroffensive by Ocean forces everywhere. I was born downtown, in our capital. When I recall my homeland, my thoughts are filled with the sights and sounds of the city. But home means something different to each and every one of us. Therefore, I've decided to visit every place where our citizens call home. The kingdom of Arugia is a land of diversity. Each region has its own unique and special culture. The destruction of one of their arsenal birds has significantly reduced the scale of Rouge's air defense network. Ocean forces have moved into the areas where we gained air superiority and freed over half of the Yuzhin pump. However, Rouge is feeling the pressure and is reacting by attempting to activate the ballistic missile base in the suburbs of Sierra Plata. For the past 72 hours, they've put the resources and people into action already entered the final stages of a launch. The missile silo is deep underground. To destroy it, we'll need a bomber to drop a huge deep penetration bomb in a precise place. Unfortunately, that airspace is thick with clouds and so it would be difficult for a bomber to hit the target accurately. Normally, we'd wait for the weather to clear, but with the situation being what it is, we don't have that option. So, we will be the bomber's eyes and find the missile site. We'll all be equipped with targeting pods instead of special weapons. We need you to fly at low altitude, visually identify which silo they're activating, then acquire it with your targeting pod. Once you press the firing switch, the bombers will drop their payload based on the location data provided by the targeting pod. You will need to keep the silo in the center of your sight until the bomb hits its target, or else it will miss entirely. It takes a high level of airmanship to properly guide these bombs to their targets while flying. Cyclops Squadron will sit this one out. Trigger, it's up to you to make this work with just Strider Squadron. Target confirmed. Dropping the bomb now. All missile silos have been destroyed. Wait, what the hell is that? Operation. That went about as expected. 
Be sure to include in the report how much ass I kicked while off the company commander's leash. Roger that, and I'll be sure to include all the crap you said about Wiseman, too. Arugia only has five IR... We have successfully prevented an enemy ballistic missile attack. Strider Squadron, you did very well without your unit commander. We are now preparing for the final stage of our long-range operation, seizing the capital. Strider 1, you have passed through waypoint 1. No weapons until you reach the enemy base. All aircraft, reduce altitude. We have altitude restrictions from here on out. Keep altitude below 600 meters. Good. Maintain your current course. Searchlight up ahead. Watch for it. Stay out of their sight. Safe. I'm worried you're short on men. Everyone here has already signed their wills. That ain't funny. <laughs> Never was good at jokes. Okay, we'll follow you in. Good luck. Understood. Strider 1, you've passed through waypoint 2. The valley's about to get narrower. Be careful. Started to get tired of all this. This is the last step, Count. We'll take the enemy base and use it as a bridgehead. Watch yourselves out there. We're going to need all of you in Far Bounty. Without Wiseman here, everybody wants to give orders like they're the company commander himself. And the best thing about Strider Squadron is our leader keeps his mouth shut. Watch your speed. Waypoint 3, you're coming up on the base, imposing radio silence. We won't be able to talk again until you're over the base. Continue to keep an eye on your altitude. There are plenty of dark spots that can sneak up on you. Waypoint 4. 
Waiting assignments have been lifted. You're almost at the base. We made it. That was quite the roller coaster ride. Visual confirmation on the airbase. Reach destination. Commence the attack. Target it's time for their wake up call. The longer it takes, the worse off we'll be. Hurry up. Finish them off. All right, let's give them a beating. Vehicle eliminated. Target acquired. Enemy are attacking! Where the hell did they come from? Keep your heads down. Three strikes will take care of the enemy. That's it. If we take out those two, we can force our way inside the facility. Target's destruction confirmed. That air support was right on the money. Keep pushing the enemy on their heels. Okay, start running on the count of three. Great, I get to finally send my boobies in to ring the doorbell. There's still quite a few enemies holed up in there. However, we can't afford to wait any longer. Begin the assault. If anyone resists, kill them. Contact, two o'clock. Go! Go! Fire! Fuck! Tear down that barricade! Excellent work on the night raid. Submarines have arrived from the Ocean mainland and are refueling. This base will serve as a frontline platform for our mission to take Farbanti. We are almost at the end of this operation. The second sortie was designed to calculate how his physiology changed under the stress of combat. My job was to compare his performance as a pilot now to when he was younger and understand how his skills evolved. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure I wanted to know the answers anymore. For a man his age, Mihai's body was unbelievably resilient, remarkably flexible. His reflexes were as sharp as they ever were. Still, after all those years of flying in the outer layers of the atmosphere, even someone as strong as Mihai wasn't immune to the effects of the strain. The human body is fragile. It was not meant to handle the excessive amounts of radiation that constantly bombarded the stratosphere. For Mihai's second sortie, we used a flight suit that was still untested. He seemed fine on takeoff, but by the time he landed back at the base, he was clearly a mess. He got caught in a surprise dogfight with an especially stubborn enemy. It took a while for Mihai to bring him down. The suit was ineffective. According to the data, it wouldn't let him fly to his full potential. A new flight suit was made to my exact specifications. 
When it finally arrived, Mihai's granddaughters glared at me with their disapproval. They blamed me for the pain their grandfather had to keep enduring. But Mihai remained stoic. He wasn't the type of man who cared about anything that happened here on the ground. I wasn't worried about it. I was confident the new suit would protect him thoroughly so that he could maneuver his plane any way he wanted. The moment he took off in his new flight suit, I realized what I had failed to before. Right after takeoff, as the wheels retracted, the plane suddenly arced up. It accelerated so quickly. I had never seen a plane move like that before. Mihai hit the high G's multiple times before disappearing into the blue. The support team couldn't even keep up. And then I knew. I understood why he never seemed to care about restoring his stolen country back to its former glory, and why he didn't seem to care about anything that happened here on the ground. Of course, Mihai's kingdom was the sky. culmination of our work. We need to capture the Erosion Force's general headquarters in the south of Farbati and end this war. The plan is for ground troops to attack Farbati from both the east and north, and a task will attack from the southwest. We will secure air superiority over the capital while providing air support for our allies on the ground and in the water as required. By all accounts, we expect this to be an intense, full-scale battle across land, sea, and air. Should you need to replenish your ammunition or make necessary repairs to your craft, the return line has been set up for war. During this operation, you will also be tasked with having to destroy the communication satellites and the room If we take down the information communication system, we believe they have control. It should plunge a route to the once the capital is lost, the Illusion military will be isolated and thrown into chaos, making it easier for us to handle However, that can't happen until after the capital is lost. You guys are the stars of this battle. The Rouge will fight like a tiger, but we cannot lose. We must seize the capital and end this war. Our troops have engaged the Farbanti Reconstruction Park, Silver Bridge, and the submerged area. We need you to help our boys in those three locations. This will end the war. It's time. Commence the operation. Our friends are waiting. Lately, as your company commander, I felt some of you young bucks coming out to my championship belt. You're really putting the pressure on me. So I think I'm going to go out there and run up the score a little bit. Just to show you guys how it's done. I trust I can count on all of you to keep up. Let's get out there, take care of business, come back in one piece. Attack. All aircraft, listen carefully. This is Longcaster. We have the upper hand. The enemy headquarters is almost ours. Operation to eliminate all enemy satellites also underway. All going according to plan. The end of the war is in sight. Think of something you'd like to eat, guys, because I'm buying. Roger that. Man, don't jinx us. Ah, you're right. Two bogeys. No, five SU-30s inbound. It's Mr. Rex. Mission Command. Bring down Mr. X. I know it's a tall order, 
but HQ wouldn't ask if they didn't have faith in you. There they are. It's the Snowbirds. The two leaders are on a different level. But don't underestimate the rest of them either. This should prove to be fun. What do you mean? It's just like you say, the enemy has experienced fighters in their midst. Fox 2. Damn. Even his lackeys fly like champions. Scratch the last escort. We need to be extra careful if we want to split up the two meters. Eject while well, you can still talk. Red ship is sunk. Single fighter coming back around. Don't let Mr. X run wild. Friendlies are suffering heavy damage. time connection with Mission Command. It's not just Mission Command. I'm not getting any response from outside our LOS. Farbanti is now under OCN control. The operation was a success. We didn't get the orders that should have come after the operational success. 
We'll guide you to the scheduled airport. All aircraft, leave this airspace immediately. Negative. They've got a debt to pay. Count, we all feel the same way. Shit! So Wiseman died for nothing. As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them. So Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Rusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Arugia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it. Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Arugian army. With the capital under our control, 
Arusia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Ocean Army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. Are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendlies? Over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erosian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. We'll image process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. We turn to in this darkest hour. We need a beacon of light to show us the way. Wilco. Wilco. Good work. All hostile air. 
aircraft eliminated. The liaison is safe. Wait. The escort fighter is... Drive. They're missing the drive. What the hell? You gotta be kidding me. Liaison escort has a radar lock. They're targeting you guys. What the hell? We were just helping them. Erusion aircraft, this is AWACS Longcaster. Do not engage the liaison. Break off now. Can you hear me on this channel, Ocean Craft? Those escort aircraft are drones. They are currently being operated autonomously. They are not being controlled by anyone. They are flying on their own volition. What? In that case, we have no choice but to shoot the aircraft down. Unfortunately, yes. We did what we could. Weapons free. You are cleared to attack the escort. Welcome. Understood. Welcome. All hostiles have been eliminated. Nice. General's helicopter is flying safely outside Anchorhead Bay. All aircraft, RTB, mission complete. All hostiles, huh? <laughs> In order to respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too, once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him crying. The island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there. So now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat, making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets, and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an erosion liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. And the bodies. Today, I lost everything. 
When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave about working together for peace, I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> Sure, the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Arugia. He was Arugian too. More soldiers have come. Now there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. I watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. I don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. I tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp. She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then... Very softly, she said. You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Corbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erujian officer. At this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission is. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians, so we're getting zipped with mission command on our orders. Still, with countless erosion forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion to think about self-defense, uh, I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal units. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, I can't imagine Arutia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want. If Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erosion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Take a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, if you drag your ass, you'll get left behind.
This is Tango 2-3. Pursued by multiple tanks and APCs. They'll all go down if we don't pull back the landing craft. And what? Abandoned Tango 2-3? Something's not right. Tango 2-3, we don't have the firepower to assist you. You're on your own. Please, we need help. Wagtail is on the Ocean landing ship. What's going on? What did you say? Multiple bogeys inbound. Damn it. Prepare for anti-air combat. This is the AWACS Longcaster. The aircraft in your area belong to the LRSSG. Allied aircraft. A retreating vehicle is taking fire. Requesting assistance. Roger. Wait! What are you doing, Jonas? Here! Attack right here! Longcaster, we've confirmed the location of the flare. That's them. All aircraft, we just updated your threat matrix via data link. Take out those targets. Don't miss. We don't want to hit the pretty ladies down there. Hurry! Target acquired. Strider 1, missile launched. Good job! The enemy tanks are close. I don't think I can even do anything with that scrap. sound good. But can it be trusted? Not sure. Heard it from a man who said he wanted to atone for his sins. Up to you to trust him or not. Understood. Good luck. Releasing safety. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, ships have been launched from the mass driver. If the supply ships make it to the arsenal bird, they'll be able to resupply it. They may be loaded with new weaponry that we don't even know about. We have no choice but to take down the supply ships before they can get within the arsenal bird's air defense network. You've got to hurry or you're not going to make it. All aircraft, remain on high alert. We got bandits incoming on radar. You're gonna have to forget about him for now. Focus on destroying that supply ship first. We're sitting ducks like this. If we let the supply ship get too far away, we'll never be able to catch it. The supply ship's in the clouds. We can't it's find it. I don't think we're going to Did you see that explosion? Looks like that's one of them down. Remember, there are two supply ships out there. Hurry up and shoot the other one down. They're faster than I expected. We've recalculated the remaining time. Hope you're all enjoying the pretty fireworks. This thing had any windows, we could have seen it for ourselves. Nice work, team. We're gonna find ourselves a boat and leave this island. We'll be taking the refugees, along with any deserters from the Illusion military. Who's the girl that ran at the tanks with the smoke canister? A few more crazies like her, and life down there may have been a tad bit easier. What do you think would have happened to those refugees if you hadn't intervened? The princess saw what happened. They were little kids. That's why I like the sky. You don't have to see those types of things. Does this mean we're that much closer to ending the war? No, we just basically prevented it from going on forever. Count's right. We have no choice but to return to our original base. Our base that is nearly out of food and fuel. We need to do something. This is Tango 2-3, pursued by multiple tanks and APCs.
Good. Take a seat. Everyone's here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships. Not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. The faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. We found a boat, then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkan accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkans are known for their conspiracies. <laughs> That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there, but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that... The rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of... of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harlan began trying to build it. I often wonder... What was going through Harlan's mind when... when he was trying to destroy the very thing that... so many people were sacrificed in order to create? Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars. Until we find another way. But even then, Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it. At the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh, I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, I guess it's like a mirror. Yes, it is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. It's time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, it's not like this is an official mission. Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the 
relief from Osea been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Brabante, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eurusia's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to put up a fight. But, what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusha, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpile place. Shalaji Castle. It's currently occupied by some of the Arusian forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway, so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusha's lead faction. But we can't use all our aircraft to attack. The transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron, you head out first and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron will bring the transport. And we bring the supplies back to this base. Got it. Aircraft are over to France. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home together. Their interceptors are in the air. All right. We're getting to takeoff speed inside the tunnel is insane. Soul Squadron, airborne. Shoot the invaders out of our skies. Good luck, Soul Squadron. Understood. Of Shalaji airspace. Turn around and we'll be forced to shoot you down. This is the OC and Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Land immediately and hand over your planes and base to us. Ah, you must be the Snowbirds. It's absurd for you to be talking so tough after losing one of the leaders at Barbanti. You bastard! You defile this country. As long as you're here, this country will never know peace. Shit! Ejecting! That will be okay. Bailing out under those conditions. I can see his parachute. Let's pray he makes it to safety. Three to go. Don't let them work together. Back up trigger. We'll go. Right up. Damn. We can't even last long enough to buy ourselves some time. speed. Bearing 090, straight from the east. Unfazed. Keep up the attack. 
unidentified aircraft. Land your plane and surrender. Why do you feel the need to continue fighting on your own? That's funny. It seems like one of the pilots is also fighting alone. He's not alone. Look around you. I see. Perhaps it would have been best to entrust the future to pilots like that. Let me test him then, to see if he's truly worthy. shot down, Mr. X. Yeah, it's gonna take something else entirely to end this thing. I just don't know what. No Ocean forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. The resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. Luckily, the rumor that the Erujian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the X-02 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erugia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. A solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion. Feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess? When we got to the mainland, we found the space elevator's support facility. I guess this was the factory where they built the gigantic structure the elevator traveled in. There was this little girl sitting in front of a mural. When the princess saw her, she shuddered like she'd seen a ghost. The girl had a stuffed animal. This was the day after the shit went down at Tyler Island. She walked right up to the princess, took her hand, and led her into the factory. One thing's for sure, they knew each other. The factory had been converted to a production line for Erujian drones. It was fully automated and chugging along, making drone after drone after drone. Once they got inside, 
the princess stopped and just stood there. Another girl was there with a man in a lab coat. He was trying to use his keyboard, but she wouldn't let him. She took a data chip and threw it on the ground. Then she walked over to us and took the gun from the prison guard's holster. She pulled the trigger and destroyed the chip. Later, I found out that the girl with the gun and the one with the stuffed animal were sisters. They were also the granddaughters of Mihai A. Shalaji, the legendary pilot. Gramps used to talk about him. He said Mihai was the top ace from two wars ago. Know any Belkins? Because this guy was a Belkin, and they love to stir shit up. Pitting nations against other nations is a particular favorite of theirs along with developing hyper-advanced technology. That's right. I'm Belkin, born and raised. My country is gone now. Rather than surrender to its enemy, Belka detonated seven nuclear weapons on its own soil. My people scattered around the globe, living in the shadows of other countries. We had a new purpose, to breed wars. The theory was that through war, we could achieve our destiny and our revenge. I had just finished inputting Mihai's data when his granddaughter came in. She destroyed the only copy I had of the information I squeezed out of him. The girl loved Mihai. No one knew more than her just how hard I pushed her grandfather for that data, how much I made him sacrifice in the process. I promised his granddaughters that his efforts were not in vain, that it could end this terrible war. But in the end, it only caused more chaos and despair. We were responsible for all this damage, all this tragedy. Now, we were going to pay for it. The Erusians, once our allies, would see to that. I had lost the drive to continue my work, even before I noticed Mihai's granddaughters eyeing me with suspicion that one day. I should have stopped then, for all our sakes. Mihai's granddaughter tossed the gun aside. She said if she resorted to killing, she'd just end up like the rest of us. And by us, she meant everyone, including the princess. Like me, the princess was afraid to look into the girl's eyes. She knew that by encouraging her people, she kept the war going. Mihai and his granddaughter were victims of it, and now they too were paying the price. Is this for Belka? Or for Arugia? My grandfather had only one wish, to continue soaring through the endless skies. That was the only place where he felt alive. But I don't even have a country to call home let alone the sky. The black forest, the lake, they are no longer mine. Even though those lands were once cherished by my late mother, we have to learn to put that sense of nostalgia behind us and behave like mature adults. My homeland. She's right. It feels so far away now. The woman with the rifle approached me. She was focused on more pressing issues. I checked the computer. All of the data on the legendary ace had already been installed. No, I pulled it before it was completed. However, there are two aircraft that are already scheduled to be manufactured based on that data. We must destroy the factory. This isn't the only one. There are more facilities just like it, and the two planes containing the data will be manufactured at one of those facilities. So, this place runs on solar power that the space elevator generates, right? How about the others? We can destroy the space elevator and cut the power to them. First things first, let's take this one out. 
I'll show you which locations to target. I stood there, thinking about that mural by the factory's entrance. Harling commissioned it to be painted. I realized that in the background, behind the dancing figures, the artist had painted several space elevators. I understand now. The space elevator wasn't designed to exploit Erugia after all. Good. And afterwards, we'll bring down the space elevator itself. No matter why it was built, right now, it's the root of this chaos. I wonder... Yes? I wonder... which path you would choose... when looking at Harling's mirror. Let's get the briefing started. Done or not bear off. Let us go home. There's no path for us to get home. Whatever direction you fly, we'll be right to a hail of enemy fire. Earlier, we received a communication via the partially restored general network. Here is what it contains. Apparently, the erosion radicals have gathered around the space. As it's a source of energy, give the war bombs powerful energy source, and you give them the luxury to keep on fighting. Take down the final arsenal bird in a saturation attack from the air. Once that's achieved, they'll take the space elevator from the aggressor. Has the source been verified? Could be fake. I hear you. Take a look at what's written. SSG, looks like our luck has turned. LRSSG, you will secure air superiority. There are Russian aircraft in the coalition, so they have been ID'd as friendly via the data link. Just confirmed it. The Russian government aircraft, including drones, will show up as hostiles. You two aces, I'm thinking it's time to show us what you've got. We don't have two anymore. Guess nobody told them. That's quite true, Count. It's not just two. Wiseman trained his squad well. Everyone still in it is an ace. He'd be proud of you all. Inform the coalition units. We're nearing zero hour. Ten seconds until the united attack on the arsenal bird. Incoming! Five, four, Everybody, three, give this two, attack everything you've one. got. Open fire! on my scope. Here they come. That's something. Hey, look at the arsenal bird. Lasers! Missile destroyer just drinking marker sunk. We can't train it! Evacuate! 
HQ, we have a problem. The damage to the Allied fleet is extensive. That was a pretty impressive firepower. I, for one, did not see that coming. The active protection system operated as expected. We should launch another saturation attack. Air power, you also the arsenal bird. Special delivery. Box two, box two. You're mine. Look at that light from the Arsenal Bird. Missile inbound, evade! It's readying its APS. All aircraft, break off from the Arsenal Bird. That was close. Without the AWACS, I would have been a goner. Cosette, that's not the control room. Go through the airlock and get on the maintenance elevator. Head to the top of the windbreak. Do you think you can put on that pressurized suit by yourself? You'll never get it on over those frills. Yes. All my target's back. Time to punch through. I'm getting sick of that arrogant bastard. Away. Seriously. No good. The engine control room is gone. And water to the opposite side. Our radar room is here. The engine's broken. Nothing phases this thing. Where are we supposed to hit it? All aircraft. We can no longer commence with a second saturation attack. All aircraft. Separately engage in direct attacks. HQ, it won't be easy to take down the Arsenal Bird with conventional weaponry. All the ace pilots in the world won't save us unless we have a plan. Give you us time. We'll see what we can do. You're just thinking about it now? Bend it down. Nicely done. Cover any friendlies that's hit. They evaded it. Watch that bandit. Shaking off enemy lock. It's readying its APS.
time for that. Cosette! Uh. Avril, they're headed this way. Get the refugees to safety now. Strider 2, you're hit. Are you alright? Still breathing. I won't be flying much longer, though. There's an ocean carrier a few kilometers to the west. It ran aground and was abandoned. It won't be easy, but it's the only place you got. Trigger, escort your wingman. Let's get to that carrier. That's all we can do. Trigger, can you hear me? Well, if it isn't the LRSSG... I can't just snap my fingers and make a plane. Believe me, I wish I could. Right now, we needed one. Bad. When we were coming over on the boat, I remember seeing an aircraft carrier. That gave me an idea. The Admiral Anderson. The name of an old sailor. When the first drone started attacking, the ship wasn't ready for battle yet. He was still in the dock, getting all rigged up. So they rushed to get her ready. I know about Anderson. In the previous Ocean War, he was the commander of a ship that sent out the last fleet of jets. They say the deck was sloping so bad as it sank, the last plane barely made it off. Those fighters ended the war. That story gives me a little bit of hope, especially at a time like this. We're all in the same boat, like it or not. If this war keeps going on like it is, it'll be the end of everything. The military loaded this thing to the rafters with planes. Some were fighters that were going to be delivered to bases in occupied territory. It was hit before it could complete the mission. Jackpot. The hangars were loaded with goodies. This scrap queen's got work to do. Trigger, everyone, listen up. The operation was a success. Erosion defense forces have been neutralized and all arsenal birds are down. However, those two new drones have royally screwed up our plans. The Ocean and Erosion Coalition's air forces are in a sorry state thanks to them. We might not even have any viable aircraft. According to the Scrap Queen, the drones are trying to use the space elevator's transmission capabilities to send their data to drone manufacturing plants across the continent. They're trying to strengthen their numbers. What's worse, their data contains a depth of war experience. The newer aircraft will be more tactically advanced. If that's the case, this war will never end. We need to take both drones down no matter what it takes. We'll do it. So we have homes to go back to. Well, the Scrap Queen's on our side. She says she can make any aircraft fly. This is our final mission. Trigger, let's go. We've got a goddamn war to end.
Quite a few illusions with us. We'll see if they're sticking around too. I don't care what country anyone's from. What counts is knowing who the real enemy is. Right, guys? Affirmative. And I think everybody here knows the score. We all know who to follow. Commence mission. All aircraft, follow trigger. Roger that. Understood. All right. Copyright. Roger. The space elevator is able to broadcast and communicate. With the information infrastructure down, it's the only place capable of wide area data transmission. The drones are waiting for it to power up again. Clever little bastards. Goal leader to long caster. UAV is confirmed in direction of travel. Engaging two bandits. All aircraft converge on Skull Squadron. Surround and shoot them down. Strider 3, copy. Let's do it, Hushin. Welcome. UAV reacting. Damn, they're fast. All aircraft stay sharp. Intercept now. <laughs> Oh, a rocket launcher! That's it! Don't Skull 2, get out of there! Uh, this is Skull 2! I'm hit! I'm hit! Science! Elementor 3, Skull 2, lost. I Damn it, that was quick! I've never seen anyone fly this fast! Provide support! Friendly lost! Another confirmed down! Damn it! Missile hit on UAV! Outstanding work, Trigger! You've bruised it. Don't Trigger stop now. Keep your head down. The UAVs are equipped with laser weaponry. Watch where the nose is pointing. Another hit. It's the only one getting anywhere out here. Don't let up, people. You can get it just like me. Like, teamwork. Like, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come Black smoke billowing from it. I saw myself. Three strikes is a real deal. One plane left. Soul two, evade, evade. <laughs> Just like me, guys. Hostile, there's a lot. Soul two, lost. Strider <laughs> one, you scored a hit. Gotta be damaged. Don't let up now. Attention, all aircraft. Launch detected from UAV. They're small drones. These guys have quite the bag of tricks. One small drone is down. Strider 1 got it. Trigger's missile hit. That one looks like it hurt. Trigger has scored a kill. Hell yeah! You finally did it! Way to shoot, Ace. Can you hear me? 
near me. There's still one drone left. Who the hell is that? More importantly, I thought Trigger destroyed all the drones. It's thrown away its wings, yet it's still flying. Can anyone hear me? That aircraft needs to be taken care of. She's right. I see something on the radar. The UAV is alive and kicking. space for him to turn beneath the elevator. That's a suicide mission! Count, where are you going? We rely on Trigger too much. He's gonna need help. You can't be serious, Count. Yeah, well, you had no problem with Trigger doing the same thing. Trigger's different. We'll see. You damn fool. Don't worry. I learned something from my last squadron. Stick with Trigger, and you'll make it. Count, give me your status. Alive. Excellent, so you're both okay. Whoa, 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 what makes you think that? No time to explain, the radio will cut out soon. It'll take a short time for the drone to send over the data. You need to destroy it as fast as you can. There it is, UAV spotted, we finally found it.
way under the space elevator. Elevation is minus 500 meters. Minus? Hey, Trigger. You dumbass. Tell me something. What color's the sky up there? To mankind's vast future remains standing, Granddad. The refugees built a settlement for themselves at the base of the space elevator. A humanitarian mission from Yuktavania airdropped some supplies for them again today. Thanks to the princess, the whole world was pitching in to help these people. Handing out the relief supplies would have been a perfect gig for that anarchist dude. But since he's dead now, the job went to the guy from Belka, George. I guess Tabloid got that new system he wanted in the end. Mihai's granddaughters are helping out too. Mihai. That cranky old geezer's here with us, too. I never wanted to create anything, and now here I am, clinging to life. Watching as my grandchildren and their generation make a new future for themselves and the world. Is this my punishment, then? All I do is lie here, wasting away. I'll never know the freedom of flying the open skies ever again. I've been grounded, and my wings have been clipped. You know what having peace in the world means? It's being able to die in your own bed, at a ripe old age. Peace is what those girls are working so hard for here. We got a bunch more refugees today. And the princess? She's looking to the stars. Dark blue to the heavens and beyond. Can you hear me? <laughs> 